What's going down, Internet? Thor, Base Boy Banner, back with our NXT AEW uh, review and reactions. We did our preview and predictions last week. We're back with our review and reactions this week. I am Thor, the NXT guy. Joined with me again. Kyle, Knocked Out Films, uh, representing AEW, I guess, uh, in some ways. Yep, definitely. Uh, the AEW you've super had film, fan. You've had films shown on that program. You represent that channel. Yeah. That's how it works. It's true. Well, it's just because cool. NXT hasn't reached out. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Not like I've ever had anything on NXT, but I'm just the mainstream mark. So You, you know. are you are the bigger fan of Undisputed Era. That is true. Oof. Oh, all day, all day. Uh-uh. Where's the other one? Yeah. Those red shirts. Hold on, real quick before we get those red shirts. Oh, if anyone wants to send me a Christmas gift, um, hey. Yeah, I was good. Uh, I was gonna say as soon as they came out in those red shirts, I was like, well, our prediction of them breaking up uh, probably isn't happening because they got new merch. The red with the camo with the camo. It's like a dark camo and then a red insignia. It's so hot. Yeah. It's so hot. I need it. I need yeah. it. I need it. Okay. All right. So we're not here for that. All right. Let's. So we're gonna go AEW first, right? Yep. AEW. We'll yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we'll we'll be reviewing. All right. All right. We'll be reviewing. Winter is coming. AEW's uh, kind of little TV special, and I mean it was a weekly episode of Dynamite, really. But and then NXT Takeover War Games is what we'll finish it off with. Uh, I. It wasn't that I was underwhelmed by by Winter is coming. But it's like, you, okay. you've got to remember, like, the whole time I was like, well, this is a TV episode. You know, it's going to set up stuff. I... You know, we're not going to get probably as crazy of a match. Matches. Um, everything was really solid beginning to end. But, you know, we didn't get anything crazy, crazy. Really? Nothing crazy, crazy. Really? I w- I've wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Okay. So, so, okay, obviously we're not going to go right to the ending. I, we'll, we're, we're not going to go right yeah. to the ending. Um, what was the beginning? The beginning was Jericho. And uh, the beginning Kazarian, was the battle right? royal. Oh no, the battle. Oh, yeah, forgetful. But oh no, no, and we were both right, right? MGF and uh, Orange Cassidy, um, fresh squeeze orange juice. They'll be going at it next week for for the ring. Yeah, I I always so. forget, and and in discussing with my roommate, we realized like, oh yeah, battle royals and like multi man matches uh, don't uh, count on your record. But the right. singles match next week, you know, the one-on-one singles match will count on your record. Count. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the last two were uh, MJF and Orange Cassidy. And, yeah. you know, I, I had I had a little – I was holding out hope a little bit for Hangman Page. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah, I did. And I did. I did the Dark Order stuff and they threw him back in and – yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say I loved I loved the Dark Order stuff, especially because it was so kind of cheesy, but like just the right amount of fun. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough cheese level, not over yeah. the top on the cheese. Level, uh, sure. And then yeah, we got we got we got a lot of storyline development in that battle royal. Like you said, the the stuff with yeah. with Hangman Page and the Dark Order. You got a kind of a tease between, you know, Matt Hardy and Private Party. You know, not completely getting along uh yeah they finally just unleashed miro uh which was super cool to see um and he just went wild uh yeah as the battle royals go i mean as for as aew battle royals go that was pretty that was pretty decent start to the show i was pleasantly surprised you know i liked the ending i thought i i mean i liked the finish i think that was smart to do that you know i think that's a smart way to end it with those two and uh yeah still made everybody else you need to look good look good and yeah i I thought they did it well for sure yep um and then we got into the next uh segment was chris jericho taking on frankie kazarian for the very first time ever 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 yep in this in in a singles match they've met twice in tag matches but hyphen in a singles match 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 no okay this was a good match i mean this is two old dudes you know throwing down and you know it was it was entertaining you know it was it was good it was good yeah, it was it was one it was one of the highest rated segments of the entire show uh unsurprisingly uh yep. and yeah it was it was a lot of fun we got the 
MJF coming in to throw in the towel, but then Sammy Guevara stopping him. So we got some more tension there. And we're going to find out uh, what happens next week when, like, the inner circle has an ultimatum of, you know, if they're going to stay together or not. Or if they're breaking up. Yeah, I mean, they had a little, they, they're, 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 they're coming apart at the seams, it seems. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I, I think it's a, just a ruse. I don't think you break up inner circle yet. I think there's still tons of fertile ground yep. uh, for them to do stuff. So I don't see any sense in that, but uh, yeah, I, I hope what they do will be fun. Um, they've been hit or miss depending on your taste in wrestling, um, wrestling pieces. I'll say yeah. with like the, you know, the, the Vegas stuff you didn't love the, you know, show tune stuff you did love, you know, there's, there's something for everybody, uh, but we'll see, we'll see what happens next week. Um, yeah. Who won that match? Did, did, uh, Jericho Kazarian... won. Jericho won with yeah, the Jericho Judas won. effect. Yep. And we both called Jericho for yes. that one, right? I, as I remember. Right. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So, yep. so, so far we were doing pretty well with our predictions. Um, we I are. Wanna... Things are off the rails. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, this, this next thing, because uh, it was, it was Layla Hirsch and Britt Baker next, correct? Um, yes. Um, yes, it was. 100%. Yeah. So, so that match, that one match was pretty good. Um, wasn't, was like. I will say. I will say it was the match I paid the least amount of attention to. Yes. In my rewatching of, because obviously I didn't watch it. I no, I've never watched. I don't watch things live. That's those days are way past. Um, but I watch things on re, on repeat. And sometimes it's four a.m. feeding a baby, and sometimes it's eleven a.m. feeding a baby, yep. and sometimes you know it's two a.m. feeding a baby. You never know what time it'll be or what I'll be doing. Yep. But, um, yeah. So this this match I definitely was in and out of. I know. Britt had somebody with her um, who I was unfamiliar with. Uh, that was uh, Rebel from TNA, uh, who Britt ca- okay. only calls Reba. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Okay, so that that yeah that match I, there was nothing wrong with that match, but if you're not WWE or NXT, you have a women's division problem. You just do. Yeah. Well, you know, it is, you just do. You, you, just you do. do, you know, unless what happens at the end of the show could bring a lot of possibilities to the women's division. This is true. Um, now, this is true. Now we'll get, yeah. Yes. And we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, right. and, that could fix that. Yeah. Yes. And also, and also at the, at the end, uh, we had Thunder Rosa come out and, and beat up Britt Brit, Brit Baker um to keep that feud and that storyline going which is going to be interesting because you know thunder rosa has been really solid every single time she's been on dynamite okay okay you know you know i'm not a big like weekly dynamite person actually this is the most dynamite i've watched since dynamite probably started back what a little bit over a year ago right i've I've tuned into a couple things but to watch like an entire show this is definitely the first time since Okay, maybe last spring. I watched a whole show last spring, a couple of okay. them. Um, but since then, I've been real, real in and out. And, I mean, that's of everything, yeah, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, and this one, this one did keep my – like I said, this one kept my interest in a lot of, in a lot of the spots. Uh, but this match, like I said, I, it was – there was nothing no, – I don't have anything negative to say about it, but I don't have anything like, oh, my gosh, positive to, like, memorable that I can even think of from watching it just a few days ago. Um you know yeah yeah as as far as women's matches that we're going to talk about over the course of this show uh it's the least interesting you can say that's not that's not that's not fair when the other (laughs) other one's a war games match and yeah yeah, 10 yeah that's just not even fair but but the rest of the show was highly entertaining because what came after that was that after this that was, was the, the, the Rhodes? yep the the Cody Rhodes and Darby the Allen Peggy, the Peggy stuff, right yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cody Rhodes and Darby That's Allen taking thing on I didn't feel AEW was missing in Winter was coming was it off tag team action because you know AEW just doesn't have enough tag team flair for my liking but no um this was this was good this was a really this was a really good match like I wasn't familiar with those other two dudes the what's his name powerhouse and you know slick ricky or whatever the other dude's yeah. name was yeah uh ricky starks who if you have not oh did I, his name is really ricky stark yeah it's ricky starks yeah and i said slick ricky that yeah. was i was not I uh ricky starks oh. is 
really good. Um, okay. He, uh, so he was, uh, up until when did he show up? I think he showed up like right as the pandemic was starting. Um, okay. And, but before that he was working with NWA, um, and he was the television champion and he actually had a very, very good, uh, six minute TV match with Nick Aldis on power. power. Okay. Um, but yeah, he, he's come in, um, and to me, he's the more interesting of the, of the team Taz members. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I liked him. I liked him a lot. Yeah, because I liked him a lot. I, I, I enjoyed this match. This was a the, Darby always shines, but yeah, he was much more entertaining than uh, Powerhouse dude. Yeah, and and he's I mean, and he's even he's kind of even outshined um, Brian Cage in some aspects, but you know, then Brian Cage, all he needs to do is really show up and flex and. You know, hit a six one nine as a nearly three hundred pounder, and you're just like, wow, that guy's, you know, kind of impressive. So athletic, so athletic. Yeah. So look at the athleticism. Uh, but look at the, I mean, as good as the match was, yeah, nobody cares it, about the match. It's all about what happened after the match. Yeah, the sting, sting. Yeah, uh, Tony Schiavone finally getting to yell for the first time for the first time that he was actually enthusiastic about it since like 1997 right. he got to yell it's sting yep he did yeah. how, and how when you saw when you saw sting and you saw the promo building were you thinking Sting? uh we so i was watching it with my roommate and our our, and our neighbor dustin um, and we're uh-huh. all like, especially with all the winter imagery and knowing Cody's involved, it's like, this isn't going to be Glacier, is it? That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Oh um, God, I'd, fall, I'd fall all over my, I'd literally fall out of my chair. And then, and then like the, the S T I N G comes up and it's like, right. oh yeah, that makes sense. He is a free agent now. Yep. Um, yeah. And it's like, were you excited? I I was excited. I mean, I was more excited when I met him uh, last year. Right. But were you were you excited at the potential of him wrestling in AEW? No. Or are you just the are you just excited at him being like a presence in AEW? I I want him to just be a presence and maybe occasionally do like a six or eight man tag. Like maybe he's like the um like the conscience of AEW, like he shows up and thwarts bad guys and does stuff and then disappears yeah. and is all mysterious and stuff. Yeah. That would work. That would, that would that work. That would work. Yep. That would work in that capacity. That capacity, I would love it. Now I'm not gonna be the 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 the, the WWE guy who's like, oh, I love Sting because I wasn't a huge Sting guy when he came out in WWE. I'll, I'll, and you know, you know, I don't know. If we were talking wrestling those days, but you yeah. know, I don't, you know. I shoot it like I say it. And um, I wasn't a big fan of that, especially what they did to him. I just didn't care. I didn't care for that. And his matches, all the matches, his Mania match, the ones with Rollins were, I mean, that dude's pretty much, his neck is like in, it's being held together by silly string and duct tape. And I don't know. It just, Sting, I think, should have never, ever went to WWE, but that's a whole nother discussion. Him and AEW makes me super nervous about, like him and Jericho or like, and which Jericho teased. And I was like, Oh God, please no. Like maybe, you know, like you said, 20 years ago, yeah. but not in 2021. I don't, I don't want to see that. I have no, we have no need for that. Okay. Um, I'm probably going to be just chastised for that, but whatever. Um, and then, but like you said, if he is the conscience, like a presence, an aura, like where he's a, he's a ghost, he's a mystery. He's, you know, I'll, Maybe even in like a leadership role, like a general manager, yeah. but something like that. Cool. Anything outside of that, I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. Well, I'm I good. yeah, I think ideally what will happen will be he sticks around long enough in that type of capacity to pass that role on to someone else. Okay. Be that okay. be that 
you know, be that Darby who, you know, they're they're giving all these comparisons to. They teased, they teased a little yeah. bit with the face, the face and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Or if or if that's Cody or kind of a combination, because um, that's why I said, right. like, I could see, especially since they did the two on two team Taz of like, right, we could get. You know, Cody, Darby, and Sting taking on, you know, Starks, Hobbs, and Cage. You know, I don't really want to. No, because I don't. I like Brian Cage a lot. I don't want to see him in there with Sting. No, no, Sting. No, I don't know. Okay, okay, we'll we'll just let that one go. Because yeah. in the moment, hey, they got the moment. The moment was cool. Um, where it goes from there, who knows. Um, it was cool in the moment. They definitely stole. They got all the talk. They got all the buzz, you know. After that, so I'll give and for what happens at the end, but we'll get there. Because yep. um, I have a different. I have an opinion on what happens at the end. I actually really am curious to get your opinion on it because yours is much more valid than mine is. But um, the, the was is was it the last? Is it Moxley and Omega already? Yeah, well, is well, that... I was gonna say, do we want to talk about the two little backstage promos with the Young Bucks? Uh, and the acclaimed uh, Max Caster doing literally the worst rap of his career, um, okay. which is sad considering it was his debut. Um, right. Age. But right. it's like, oh, you know who they were? Yeah, I didn't know who I didn't know who any of those guys were. I knew the Bucks were. Yeah, but I didn't know who anybody else was. Oh, okay. And I was like, well, okay, this happened. Yeah. So I was like, that means something, but I don't know what. Yeah. And then what was the other backstage part? Uh, the other backstage was the backstage interview with Hikaru Shida, uh, talking about her match with Abaddon uh, next week. Uh, I'm not super thrilled about that. Like, we we haven't yeah. seen Ab- Abaddon on screen for a while because she got hurt. Um, and I just don't know if storyline-wise this will be as interesting as we hope you know okay okay huh? but we'll see i mean yeah i i don't think we could probably need to talk about those backstage segments yeah. then i think we can just slide right past yep. them so uh mox omega mox mox omega should i, should I go first yes you you I, go I, first I yep go first. i want to hear what you have to say um i thought this was a really good match i think this is actually probably from what i've seen their best match in AEW. um um uh, We'll talk about the finish separately. I'm just going to talk about the match right yep. now. And then after you talk about it, we can talk about what the, the ramifications and the aftermath and stuff like that. But the match itself, start to finish, I thought they told a really good story. I thought they used the announcers telling, the announcer storytelling, the in-ring storytelling, um, all to, to a perfect tee, really. The, the desperation in, in Omega, um, his connection to Callus, why he was there, um, you know, just... JR and them, their love for Moxley and everything Moxley's gone through. And they just built, they built a really great story. And then they ended it in a really, um, in a really interesting way, I think, especially for where they're at and especially for how new this company is. Um, to, to, but to end the match on kind of a, a screwy finish, um, you know, it didn't bother me because I'm not a hardcore yeah. and I'm not like, oh my gosh, like I didn't like, I'm not, I know it bothered some other people though. Um, but yeah, so that's where I said I I really liked it. I thought it was I thought it was a decent show. Like you said, I wasn't overwhelmed. I was like, well, I'll be watching AEW Dynamite every week from here on out. You know, I mean, but I was like, hey, I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on this yep. more so than I have been uh, because because I like what's going on, especially with the ending. I want to see what, what happens. But you go, you tell me what what your feels. What what happened? Um. So so my only the only thing that I can really say like the, the match itself was super solid. I, I did enjoy it, but it just, I think I had too much, um, too much anticipation for it and too much expectations. And it didn't quite yeah. get to that level to me, but I still thought it was okay. really good. Um, and then, yeah. yeah. And then getting into the finish, I did like the fact and a couple, a couple podcasts that I listened to had pointed out the fact that, I like that we didn't just, it wasn't just like a, oh, down Callus is here. We're going to have an angle. We know that because 
Don Callis has been there for a lot of Kenny Omega matches as of recently. Yeah. So it's like, okay, this isn't yeah. out of the realm of, of, you know, like this is so weird and out of left field that Don Callis would be there. But, you know, now we know, like, as soon as he started to get in, like, into the match, I was like, oh, this is a little weird. Plus, once he was hurt, I knew, and, like, once Kenny hit, which I think he did hit the ground weird, so I think he busted it. I think he actually hurt his orbital socket. It looked like he had, had did something to his eye. It might have just been a black eye. Who knows? But um, he definitely something. Yeah. But when he had rushed down, I knew, too. I was like, mm-hmm. Mm, the fix is in. Yeah. I'm like the fix is in. The fix is in. Kenny's about to do what you said, and he's about to turn for the gold instead of getting the gold and turning. He's gonna turn for it, and he took that and he took the microphone and he bought and he bought Max and yeah. uh, you know boom boom I, boom. I, boom I, yeah, I, yeah. Well, I, I not... runs out with Dallas. Yeah, yeah, and I and then they're getting in the car and there's like, T- Kenny, Kenny, tell us about it. And Callis is like. Me and Kenny will tell you all about it Tuesday night. Oh, Dynamite's on Wednesday. Access TV impact. Pew, 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 guys. And then they, you know, hop in and dip out. Yeah. You know? So. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, I think part of it was the fact that I did have people over. Uh, so we weren't able to, like, listen to the commentary as, as intently. Okay. Um, because yeah. uh, we were just like, okay, what did he, like, they're clearly faking an injury, but I think it was something with, you know, that was, that was like the heater next to the ring trying to keep the ring warm or something. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. they were concerned about. And it's just like, it was a double arm DDT on the floor. Like that's a big spot, but not like an injury, big spot. Um, right, 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 right. And then, yeah, callous coming out, you know, handing the microphone, uh, but I did like the fact that it wasn't just microphone shot one, two, three. It was right. No, no. no. It was no. microphone shot four V triggers. Four V triggers. Yeah, four V triggers. And a yeah. one winged angel, which I ha- almost half expected. Like, because it hasn't happened yet in AEW, I half expected Moxley to kick out. You know? And then Kenny. That'll happen when he. So that'll happen when he beats Kenny uh, to be the first two-time, like you called, yeah. two-time AEW champion and the first person to ever kick out of the one-wing angel. I can see them second. doing that down the road. Um, second. Okay. So, well, for, well, first, first in AEW, AEW, though, right? Yeah, the, the only right. other person who's done it is Kota Ibushi. Oh, oh Ibushi? Yeah. Really? I thought I was going to say Okada. It, no, it was, a, it was Ibushi in, <sighs> so that, in so that, one of their DDT that matches. Matt, that, uh... That move has been so protected, even in Japan. That's pretty cool. You don't see you don't see finishers that protected these days. But I like that. I like yeah. that. Um. So now, my my thought was okay. I understand. At now you got Impact and AEW potentially not merging, but having a feud, right? Mm. Uh, maybe going at it a little brand supremacy, right? Um, is the AEW's been around for less? Uh, okay, a little bit over a year. A little bit over a year, right? Yep coming up maybe on two years in spring but dynamite's only been on for just over a year uh is this too early is this jumping the shark a little is this too early to do this kind of crossover it it will depend on the extent of the crossover like if it's similar to their relationship currently well pre-pandemic with triple a and it's just this, you know, you'll occasionally see a AAA guy a, on Dynamite and, you know, Kenny will go down to AAA and resurrect the mega championship and n- never defend it again. Um, yeah, I doubt that. I mean, with them having the AEW championship on Impact, this feels deeper. This feels deeper than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? To me. Well, and, and like we, we do have that. You do have the history as well between Omega and really both halves of uh, the executive vice presidents uh, for Impact Wrestling because uh, like Don Callis is is the one executive and Scott Demore, who is part of Team Canada, uh, has also been a pretty big figure in Kenny Omega's career as well. Like not as okay. big as Callis, but... Um, well, and for Kenny to do it, like get the, like 
I, I like it. I, if he, if this is him turning and like, I hope, I hope he comes out and he's just like, you know, screw the elite. Now I've heard something about maybe Bullet Club coming into all this. Uh, well, Impact is the home for Gallows and Anderson. But they're not Bullet Club. I mean, technically I mean, they are. I mean, they're, they're not, but. Club. Right. Um, it it right. it is an interesting huh. landscape right now in pro wrestling. Uh, thanks to, you know, everybody kind of went off to their own corners, uh, pre-pandemic, yeah. and I think because of the pandemic, like, you don't have as much talent out there, so people are sharing talent more often, like. You know, coming up, you've got you mean, you mean the, the smaller promotions. Yeah, because like come, so, coming up, WWE is just cutting. WWE is literally trimming their they're trimming their roster down to, you know, I wouldn't say bare bones because they had they had probably too big of a roster to begin with yeah. pre pandemic, but they're trimming down their roster pretty heavy now, um, and it looks like there's more cuts even coming. Uh, I think Jackson Riker is one of the ones one of the ones I think is rumored to get cut here mm. pretty soon. Not a, not a huge surprise. Yeah. Um, but so that would, that's interesting. That's interesting that the, that the smaller companies are in, they're in such need of performers that they're almost out of necessity needing to combine and to have these, these feuds. Yeah. And then you could see some, you could see some switch maybe contra- contractually in these, like maybe someone switches from AEW to, to impact and vice versa potentially i mean anything's up in the air right now because we don't know the 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 to what lengths this deal is if there's a deal what it all constitutes i'm sure that'll come out in the coming weeks and then we can probably shoot another video and talk about yeah. it i'd love to um but yeah but so it was a very interesting it was so you didn't hate it you didn't love it you liked it uh, yeah I, yeah i i yeah i kind of liked it and i like where it could like if this is going to be an interpromotional feud, um, yeah. that could be really interesting. Like you've got, you know, people keep pointing out like the the tag teams that because right. um, you know Impact doesn't have a ton of them that are super high yeah. profile, but you know they do have. Do the Briscoes still wrestle over an Impact? Or are they wait? Where are the Briscoes? Ring of Honor. Briscoes are Ring of Honor. But you do have, um, in in Impact currently, you do have the Motor City Machine Guns. You do have okay. Gallows and Anderson. You do have the North. And adding yeah. even temporarily those three teams, you know, into the mix. Um, with FTR. With, yeah, Party, with FTR, Yon. everybody. Um, and, and Blade. yeah, and most importantly, I think if you're looking at a bigger landscape to me, you've got really the second best women's division in the world in in impact impact wrestling, you know, and yeah, you get, you're get your Deanna Perrazzo's Jordan Grace's Kimberly's Jessica Havoc's, you know, Kira Hogan's all both, both companies will benefit for, uh, with the women's division, yes. and I think that's what we we're alluding to earlier, right? Is like these two women's divisions on their own are. I mean, Impact's kind of probably got the most impressive of the yep. bunch, but literally, it's like WWE, NXT, and NXT sometimes even flip flop those two, yeah. but depending on the year. But those two are like here, and everybody else just kind of you know trickles down from there. And this could help, you know, rise both brands. Yep. I think. Um, yeah, like like the yeah, like the good. idea yeah, like yeah, like the idea of of like C stars from Impact taking on Evil East and Diamante, you know, okay. just even as like just a one off match, it's like, oh, that could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um Yeah. But yeah, and I'm i I'm not I mean obviously you know I'm not super familiar yeah. with any impact wrestlers. Um so, I mean let's But it is but, you know, uh so so for, it could be. It could be. Yeah. And it's all because of this deal. And that's what I think we're saying is it could bring in, you know, and that's what we talk about a lot of times with these smaller promotions is it's not you that they have to entice to watch or to be excited. It's, it's guys like me, right. Who are fringe. Like I'm a hardcore wrestling fan. I've had new Japan world. So it's not like I'm like a just straight WWE guy. Now, most of that, my love for all these other indies is 
responsibility of yours truly. Thank you, sir. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm not just a WWE guy. So these smaller promotions, if they can hook me in, you know, that's what they need to really grow, I think, more um, than they have, especially, you know, coming out of pandemic, you know, having these crossovers. R- ROH and New Japan already have a working relationship. New Japan USA was supposed to start up, and I think that all got really put on the back burner after pandemic stuff because they're just back to trying to just do new japan japan yeah um but yeah this is this is this is exciting like i said to me is it jumping the shark a little bit yes is it super early in a in the development of this company to merge not merge with another company but to feud with another company yes but do the potential gains outweigh the potential losses or setbacks to certain characters? A thousand times, yes. So there, therefore, you know, I'm like, I'm a go with it, you know, even though, like, I'm like, Ooh, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited. So switch over to, uh, we'll switch over to the to the black and yellow. Yep. Um, black and yellow brand. Uh, but one, one, one thing. Um, for okay. for the people that are watching and are like, well, I don't have access to TV. Uh, impact simulcasts on Twitch. So now that they're back, now that they're not banned anymore. Yep. Yeah, they're not banned on Twitch anymore. Thanks, Rob Van Dam. That was just for like a month. Yeah. Thank. Yeah. Thanks, RVD. <laughs> Ruins it. Well, I mean, really, it was thanks right. RVD's wife, but that's yeah. true. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I mean, what? Oh yeah. All right. So over to NXT, where it's War Games. Um, which is one of my favorite takeovers of the year, obviously. I actually think this is probably, I'm just going to get out, just get it out right now. I think this is probably the best takeover they've had this year. Um, I liked it better than 31. The, yeah. I liked the, the 30 Halloween Havoc was, wasn't a takeover, which, and that was all right too. Um, but out of the things I can remember from this year, I would say, yeah, because what was it? All American Bash that was on TV over two nights. Yeah, over two nights. Yeah, I, I would say I would say this War Games was my favorite pay per view, and it's not like the matches were crazy good. the The beginning and the end were the first, the two War Game matches were. The middle was. I'm not gonna say super vanilla, but it wasn't anything like super crazy. Yeah. But it was all good. It was all like good, borderline great. Or in the case of like um, the the strap match, better than it had any business being, especially with the two people in it and how much I didn't care about that feud going in. Yeah. I can't even believe how much I liked that match coming out of it. And I'm sorry, Dexter Loomis is my new favorite NXT wrestler. He reminds me of a uh, Alistair Black when Alistair Black was just like jo- doing jobbers and like having his weird runs back what way back when he first started. Love it. I love what they're doing with that Dexter Lim- that Dexter dude. I'm sorry. I, I do. I know you don't yeah. like him. I love that dude. I love what they're doing. I love his character, that steely those eyes and stuff. It works. His goals. That dude's fair. I Jack. It, but, yeah. We'll we'll get to him, but we we started yeah, out with we'll with the women's, women's women's war games, war games match. Shotzi Shotzi's team. Um Shotzi, uh Rhea Ripley uh, Io Shirai and Ember Moon. who's the last and Ember Moon versus um, Raquel, Raquel Gonzalez. Yep. Did I nail that? Yep. Yeah. Nailed it. Dakota Kai, um, uh, Tony Storm, and Candice LeRae. Help me out. And Candice LeRae, duh. Johnny uh, Johnny Wrestling's yep. wife. You know, Candice Wrestling, Mrs. Mrs. Wrestling. Yep. So yeah, so it was that was a that that was a good match too. And they came out on the little tank, and it actually shot in the beginning of the match. It actually fired a missile. Yeah. I like that. Nice touch. Nice touch. It hit the cage, but Candice or whoever was in in I think it was Dakota. Dakota was in the ring at the time. She made it really seem like her life was in danger when that foam missile hit the, yeah. the hit the steel cage. So that was good stuff. Yeah, that was good stuff. I love that match. Io Shirai off the top with the garbage can over her head once it acts because war game matches there's no point in talking about the war games match until it actually starts which is 45 minutes after the war games match starts yeah but uh and that that was literally the start of the war games match was io shrai falling with the garbage can in there although she got attacked by some, some uh indy some hartwell i wasn't familiar with indy hartwell yeah. which i was i'm not familiar um like i said i've been that you know but yeah, so I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was, I thought it had, you know, a lot, 
a lot of good spots. It had Io Shirai getting put through, or was it Io Shirai that got put through the um, put through the ladders yep. at the at the end? Yeah, Raquel Gonzalez. Yeah, yeah. So so they're they're good. clearly setting up uh, a Raquel Gonzalez versus Io Shirai match. Uh, She's not the one to take it off Io. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, the NXT is really behind her, but yeah, I, I don't know if she's she's the one to take she, it off. Um, but a nice little touch, and uh, as as we were talking about uh, beforehand, uh, I'm literally reading the Young Bucks book right now, um, and I just got through uh, the Guerrilla War- Warfare match uh, from PWG. Okay. Uh, between the Young Bucks and Candice LeRae and somebody else. Um, okay. And during that match, the Young Bucks hit Candice with uh, the most lethal weapon they could find. Uh, they they glued thumbtacks all around an Air Jordan and super kicked Candice in the face. Uh, so Candice had actually... I don't think she wore it in the ring, but she wore it in her entrance gear. Uh, it was a garter that was had thumbtacks glued to it. Because she was like, "If I'm going to war, this is how I'm going to war." And it's like nice little, yeah. That's a nice touch. Yep, that's a nice touch. Yeah, that that match, I loved. I love that match. I thought it was really good. I thought every woman got moments to shine. I thought every you know every woman got. No one came out of there looking weak to me. No. And no one came out of there looking like not a threat. Yeah. And to me, it was like the women's division in NXT is back to being a strength again because it wasn't for a while. And it was one of those things where like the women's matches were under under impressing in takeovers and, you know, they were building, right? But they were building. And I think I think last war games, I think this was better than last war games for, for me, for the women's one. Even the last war games had like Dakota Kai turning on Tegan Knox. Last war games was pretty good too. Yeah. Um, the women's war games last year, but I think this one, this one for me was I think a little bit better, and it was a great start to the show. Yeah. Um, a great start to the show. Uh, yeah, I think so. last year's war games ended up being, um, the Rhea Ripley show. Yeah. And that was that was great. Um, it's just now in hindsight, it feels weird because of you know her losing to Charlotte later and and all that but that um yeah. but like this this one i think like you said overall it felt kind of a little better of like everybody got to showcase everything right right yep yeah um yep. and then next was the strap match next was the strap match dexter dexter loomis uh versus versus um cameron Gaines, grimes right cameron grimes Gaines, whatever Cameron Grimes. So Dexter Loomis uh, versus Cameron Grimes. It was it was a it was a better match than it had any right to be. Yeah, I've hated this feud. It's been awful. Hopefully this can finally move past it. Dexter Loomis is a much better uh, character artist than I ever would have thought. I mean, ever would have thought. You know, honestly, ever. Yeah, it it was you it hated was, it. Yeah, it was better than than it had any right to be. Um, yeah, I I enjoyed Cameron Grimes more than I've enjoyed him the rest of his NXT run, um, and yes. and Dexter Loomis was actually you know pretty decent. Like I'm still not a fan, but I was at least like, all right, I can kind of see what people think, but I don't like it. Uh, then we also had Tommaso Ciampa versus Timothy Thatcher, um, in brutal. a straight up wrestling brutal, match. Yeah. This is a fight. Yeah. That was just a fight. That was, I, w- I would even, Timothy's ear was bleeding at the end. I, but uh, Ch- Ch- Chompa look, came out looking like a beastie with that with that mask that he had on. And I was actually, sh- I thought they were going to have Thatcher win it. Uh, just because I don't know where Chomp is at these yeah. days on the card and his position in the back and stuff like that. Uh, but definitely strong because they had him take the victory, which I was actually surprised about. Um and in a in a yeah, and just a pretty much in a what Jr. would call a slobber knock, yeah, just a straight up brawl. Yeah, and and if Good you brawl. yeah, and if you because I think they just added this to the WWE Network as part of their like best of progress stuff, or they'll probably add it soon. Timothy Thatcher and Walter had a match that was very similar to this, where they just okay. beat each other up for twenty minutes. 
and yeah, it was it was good. That 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 sounds like something I would enjoy yeah. watching. That sounds like something I would thoroughly enjoy. Watching. Um, and the, I'll have to look. That up. Yeah, and then we had the the triple threat match uh, for the North American Championship: Johnny Gargano taking on Damian Priest and Leon Ruff. Best match of the night that didn't involve a steel cage definitely was this triple threat. They did tease, um, I think, Killian Cross coming back. Was that after that this match? That was before right it? before this match. Yeah, they had like a vulture on a um, like on a wooden thing, mm-hmm. and I guess and that I, signifies. Well, and back. and the and the clock counting and him literally oh, saying TikTok. TikTok, which has been okay. Oh, I missed that other part. I missed what you caught. Yeah, but I saw him comment on their Instagram post. So I figured, well, I guess that means he's coming yep. back. So yeah. that's why I and and out. we got a little oh, Finn yeah. Balor one of oh, yeah, yeah, of yeah, him yeah. him again reiterating his uh well the cat's away the mice will play but the cat's back, you know my jaw's not broken anymore yeah. I can wrestle yep. again. I did I do miss him he he would have added something to this an NXT title match would have definitely made this a much better um war games but it was a really fun war yes. games. Um, and the Gargano priest, um, uh, dude, other Leon dude, Ruff. Ruff, yep. Ruff, Leon Ruff. Yep. Um, this match was really fun. D- him getting that put through that barricade, which was funny. Cause then did you see when Leon Ruff got thrown through the barricade, a lady fell through another barricade yeah. that I think they were supposed to put somebody through at some point, but it fell over. Like just, it just toppled and you could see the, like the two by four work yep. and stuff. I thought that was good. I like yeah, that. that. That was, was yeah, that was hilarious. Cause I was just like, my roommate had stepped out, uh, okay. For that. And I was like, okay, so they just did the like razor's edge, like power bomb into this barricade. And then somebody just tripped and fell over the other one and it fell over the exact same way. And it's like, Oh, that probably wasn't supposed to happen. That was my favorite. That was so good. That was so good. Um, and then we had a, a plethora of uh, Scream characters yep. show up. Mass dudes. Yeah, to which, so. like, once once Gargano won the match, I went upstairs to use the bathroom. and Oh, really? Yes. Cause, that was when the best part happened. I, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's me, Austin. It was me the whole time. Okay, my roommate made the same joke. And he did it just deadpan enough that I was like, did they actually have him say that line? Oh, yeah, they did. Oh, they did? Oh, they did. Oh, yeah. He said it. Oh. He said it. He pull on. He pulls off the mask and he goes, it's me, Austin. It was me the whole time, Austin. And I was like, I was dead. Okay. Dead right there. Austin Theory. Austin Theory is the real man behind the, the screen mask. I love it. I love Austin Theory. I'm like, I've been wondering – this dude's on Instagram all the time and just shredded. And he's always, and I'm always like, where's Austin theory? This dude, it looks the part he's got the, you know, like he's got all the tools. Yeah. Like he has all the, tools. I'm sure he's a D bag. Oh, he is. He I'm is. Sure That's why I'm straight a hole. Yeah. Like I have no doubts in my mind. That guy's an asshole. Excuse my language. You might have to believe me. Yeah. Um, but I was excited to see him pull off the mask and him and Gargano together make me make me happy and i could see them as as a tag champions i could see them i could see them having a good old run together and doing some good things so i was happy with it um like i said i didn't i didn't see that part so you hate austin theory don't you i can tell uh he's 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 in the same category as velveteen dream for the same reasons wow wow yeah where is velveteen Dream? never mind yeah um well i'll tell you after Okay, we'll talk about uh, it. Uh, I know I heard something happen, yeah. but I don't care. Um, and then, uh, uh, then War, games. War Games. There it is. Yeah. Undisputed Era. Undisputed Era. Yeah. Versus the, the McAfee crew, or what do they call themselves? The brand? I don't know. Yeah, they never really gave themselves a name, which was in, which was it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the um, brand. So, Pac McAfee, um, Danny Burke, Oni Lorcan, and Pete Dunn. Yep. Uh, Pete Dunn. Big strong boy, uh, <clears throat> it's boy with an I too. By the yeah. way, it's super funny. Those guys are hilarious. I love. I'm sorry. I love. Um, not mustache mom. What do they call themselves? Um, British strong yeah. style. Those three dudes. T- those. Trying to set another story. Another day. Yeah. We'll talk about it later. But this match. Um, 
I don't think this is one of the best War Games matches of the past few years since they brought War Games back, but I thought it was really good. Yeah. And I give Pat McAfee hella cred for doing a swanton off the top of the cage. And no one catching him. Right. It looked like everyone just, like, <laughs> parted. It looked like they looked like, F you, bro. Yeah. Done. Done. Which I mean, I don't blame. I don't blame them because he's not a small guy, you know. But still, yeah, he was like, he hard yeah. on that. What? He was a kicker in the, in the yeah. NFL, you know. So I mean, whatever. He needs to prove he has. He's tough. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, um, no, that was a good match though. I was glad the Undisputed Era won. I think this was a nice way. I think they're done in NXT actually. I do think they might stay together, but I could see them moving over. Yeah. I could see the new the new gear being um, raw gear or being like, I don't know if the red is a tease um, or whatever, Yeah. but I could see them moving over. I could see rumble season coming up um, mania season coming up. I could see undisputed air going over and I don't know. I just don't know where, what else do you have them do? Yeah. They've held yeah. That's the, the thing. They've, had all the matches, they've done everything defending their honor and proving that they're still the stuff against this new group was was good that was a good way to end it but now that like they have nothing they have nothing left to do yeah nothing yeah that's and and like you kind of like if you move them to the main roster you almost need to turn them heel again um just so that they get to um they get back to that pack of rabid dog style you know take beat down i think they could do that easy enough yeah I think they could do that easy enough. I mean, with, with hey, who knows though? You know what? You know, once Vince gets his hands on him, he'll screw him up yeah. somehow. Best thing running for three years in NXT or however long the Undisputed Era has been a thing in NXT, and it's, you know, the minute they hit the main roster, they're going to be turned into dog trash. Yeah. Ah, uh, but I like, I, I did like the little touches in this. This like every single time uh, the McAfee, McAfee team was about to have their guy go in. Pat McAfee was the yeah. one who was like, I'm going to go. And then everybody's like, nope. <laughs> I'm going nope. in first instead of you. <laughs> I got this. Yeah, no, that was good. I liked, how they, I liked how they had like all the Undisputed Eras on tables, like all their names yeah. laid out on tables. And like this was another match, like like the first one too, where they really let each individual wrestler get their spot and have their shine, right? And they like everybody got to have their moment, uh, their moment to shine, you know, yeah. like Cole came in, Adam Cole came in just looking like a world killer when he got in last for the era and was just, you know, beating people, yeah. you know, Don got to look like just a, a bruiser, the bruiser weight when he was in the middle of the ring, slamming people and uh, you know, in between the two rings and stuff like that, doing, doing brutal things. Yeah. And when they were manipulating, who was it? Was it, was it, um, was, it, it was Kyle, was it him? Was it was it was it done and it was done in somebody else on Kyle like wrenching him? Oh yeah like yeah 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 directions. yeah. It was, that was yeah really it was good. done that yeah was it was good. like done and Oni when they had the two on one at the yeah. first yeah yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah in the beginning yeah before it actually started yeah. and then once it actually started you know yeah no that was a really it was a really good match like I said I don't think anything was over the top great great but there was nothing that was bad bad yeah and then I felt hold anything down and I thought every performer on the entire card got to shine yep. which is rare rare nobody looked stupid nobody looked bad nobody looked foolish everybody looked good even in defeat and even and, and those in victory right yeah. and like everything they did i think made sense storyline wise for where they are um for where i for where where i'm picking up on where they were right mm-hmm. from watching the video packages and understanding a little bit from watching the past couple weeks um, but yeah, so, so like I said, it was, for me, it was a really solid, it was really, it was a really solid takeover from start to finish, yep. which is why I probably put it as like my favorite takeover of the year. Um, you know, and definitely of the two events, I enjoyed that one more, but man, AEW with Sting and the, the impact crossover. Yeah, man, they, they, you know, they, they brought it too. Yes. Yeah, st- and, too. and Sting with now the fastest selling one day T- oh, t-shirt the t-shirts on pro wrestling on, tees. Yeah, on yeah. pro wrestling tees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's I gotta get that merch yeah. money. Get that merch. 
A little bit of scratch. Yep. And hey, most of that, most best. of that's going to Sting. So, well, he needs it. He needs it. He needs it. So, all right, Thor, Baseball Banner. That's the channel. That's where you can find me. Instagram, YouTube, uh, all over the place. You can follow me at Knocked Out Films on Instagram, Twitter, and KnockedOutEntertainment.com. We'll be back soon with something. Yeah. Until then, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, both channels, all that sort of stuff. Thank you. Deuces.